So guys what if Naruto and Akino was deeply in relationship movie? The sounds of battle were heard everywhere, this is a raiding game between both nobles of Devil's High Society, on one side is Rias Grimori, the younger sister of one of the Maos, Sears ex Lucifer, her peerage right now consists of, a queen, a knight, a rook, a bishop and a pawn that is using all eight pieces. Rias is a gorgeous girl with large bust and buxom figure, she has blue-green slightly mischievous eyes, her exceptional feature is her long, crimson hair that reaches down to her thighs and a single strand sticking out from the top, her hair also has loose bangs framing her forehead and side bangs that frame her face perfectly, she is one of the two great ladies of Kuo Academy, the Onisama to all the girls in the academy and was idolized by everyone in academy. Rias Queen, Akino Himahima, she is the second great lady in Kuo. Akino has a buxom figure similar or greater than Rias, she has violet eyes and a very long black hair that usually tied in a long ponytail, reaching all the way down to her legs with two strands sticking out from the top and sloping backwards, with an orange ribbon keeping it in place, right now she is wearing a Miko, shrine maiden, attire to use her magic, only the members of Rias Peerage know that Akino is actually a sadist, but it seems that she even feels proud about that. Rias Knight, Yuto Kiba, Kiba is a handsome young man with short blonde hair, gray eyes and a mole under his left eye, he wears the Kuo Academy boys school uniform, which consists of a black blazer with white accents over a white, long sleeved dress shirt with a black ribbon on the collar, matching black pants, and brown dress shoes, Yuto is a very polite young man which attracts much attention from girls in the academy. Kaniko Tuju is Rias Grimori's rook, but her birth name is Sharon. Because of her complicated past she didn't want to use her real name, she is not a human, but a Nekosho, a rare kind of Nekomata, that are near extinct, Kaniko is a petite girl with short white hair and golden eyes, she also wears a black cat shaped hair clip on both sides of her hair, she usually wears the Kuo Academy girls school uniform, without the shoulder cape, she rarely shows any emotions and usually deadpans with Rias pervert pawn due to his pervert antics. Asia Argento one of Rias bishops and the newest addition to her peerage. Asia is a girl around 15 to 16 years of age with long blonde hair and green eyes. Her hair flows all the way down to her back, with split bangs over her forehead and a single strand sticking out from the top. Sloping backwards, her main attire consists of a dark teal nun outfit with light blue accents, a white veil over her head with light blue accents, a brown satchel slung on her right hip, where she holds her Bible, and brown boots with black straps in an X-shaped pattern, she also wears a silver cross necklace around her neck, before she was reincarnated, she was a nun that worked under fallen angels, after the accident that cost her life she was reincarnated as a devil by Rias Grimori. Last but not least, Rias pervert pawn, Issei Hyodo which considers being the strongest pawn for two reasons. 1. He absorbed all the eight pawn pieces, 2. He is the host of one of two heavenly dragons. Didrag, his sacred gear is a longinus called boost gear, which was said to have the power to kill even gods, Issei an average looking human but is extremely obsessed with boobs, he has spiky brown hair and the back of it is sticking in two directions pointing downward, his reason for joining the peerage is because he want to be a harem king and strives to become an ultimate class devil to achieve his dream, of course, he couldn't reject the offer from the most beautiful girl in Kuo. As the battle went on between Riser Phoenix all female peerage and Rias, the latter was at a huge disadvantage because she doesn't have all her pieces right now, but Riser has all of, why did this battle start? Because Rias refused to marry Riser, their marriage was an arranged marriage create by her parents, she didn't have a say in it at all, that's why in order to free herself from that horrible marriage, Rias must win this raiding game at all cost. Right now all her peerage was defeated except herself and her pawn. Issei Hyodo, Riser still has his queen left, Issei is at his limit and is panting heavily. Just surrender Rias, I admit your peerage gave an impressive fight, but that's it, it's impossible to win against me in your situation, be a good fiancé and submit to me Riser said and leers down at her with hungry eyes. Rias glared back full force at Riser and shout, like heck I will. I told you before Riser, I refuse to marry such a shallow guy as you. Riser sighed and said in a fake solemn voice, shame, maybe I should destroy that precious Sekiryure of yours right in front of your eyes to make a point. Riser looked down at Issei and created a sphere of hot flames. Rias' eyes widened at his claim. No, whispered Rias in horror, Issei. 
Run away, hurry. Unfortunately, Issei was too tired to even move, so he could only watch on absolute horror when the sphere of flame was launched at him. Riser was smirking evilly and satisfyingly, finally he will be rid of that filthy dragon, but a voice, at Issei's location, interrupts his triumphant moment, and the flame slowly losing the heat, but still managed to produce some steam. Ojo-sama, I feel a little disappointed in your peerage, I would have thought that you will be able to win against this fried chicken easily, it's a relief that I've returned in time. The wind slowly cleared the steam caused by the flame, and revealed a figure standing there with calm eyes, it was a teen with spiky golden hair with black highlights, the strangest thing is his eyes have an atom-like structure and a pinwheel inside it, the figure is wearing a high-collar dark blue t-shirt with a yin-yang symbol on the back it, he also wears a black choker that has a stone with kanji for dark aka yami, he has a bored look on his face and seems very relaxed in such a tense situation. Rias noticed the figure and sighed in relief, finally her strongest member is here, yes, the strongest you heard it right, even stronger than Rias herself, he was not called invincible knight in underworld for no reason. You are late, Naruto, complained Rias despite the current situation she is in, she stomped to Naruto in a flash and pointed a finger at him, how dare you show yourself in front of me, your king, after you got here late. I should punish you for such mistake. Naruto rolled his eyes at Rias' antics, why the heck she always changes her personality 180 when he is near he never knows. For some reason his Ojou Sama enjoyed being bossy around him. Hi, hi, are you done yet? Naruto waves his hand down dismissing Rias. That action just caused Rias to become even more annoyed at her annoying knight, so what is he was consider the strongest knight in history? That won't matter to her at all. Because she is his Ojou Sama and will order him as much as she want. How dare you dismiss my words like they are nothing important. Demand Rias furiously and pointing her index finger at Naruto. Naruto sweat dropped at his Ojou Sama's phrase and replied back, I was late because I've some business to take care of. Besides before I left, you said yourself that you will be fine without me, and now you are blaming me for being late. That's just not fair, Ojou Sama. Rias felt even more irritated when he was right, she just huff and turned her head aside, e even so, you should know better to agree with my words so easily, I, I sometimes can made wrong decision too, you know. Naruto deadpanned and sweat dropped, now she said he must reconsider her words, he rubbed his forehead and began to think, why the heck is he serving this girl again? Oh, because of the incident with four mouths a long time ago, he sighed and stated. Okay. Okay Ojou Sama, this lowly servant was at fault and is asking her highness to forgive him for his foolish action. Hearing that caused Rias to beam brightly, then she pointed at Riser and ordered childishly, Riser will marry me if I lose this raiding game, now my ultimate knight, go. And bring me the victory. Naruto just nodded his head tiredly and began to approach Riser and his queen. The whole time when Rias and Naruto were arguing with each other. Issei had observed them curiously, Bushu and that blonde seemed to be very close, besides he never saw Bushu act like this before, she acted like a spoiled little girl that demands to get anything she wants, he found that side of Bushu really cute, then he heard Bushu ordered the blonde to fight against Riser and Yubeluna, he was about to protest, but Bushu approached him with the usual expression that he saw every day and said. Don't worry, Issei, Naruto is here, so the fight is already over. Why do you have that much confidence in his abilities, Bushu? Issei asked her curiously. Why, you asked? Rias turned to Issei with a smirk, the she turned her head back to look at Naruto. Maybe you should just see it for yourself. Naruto versus Riser and Yubeluna. Naruto stood in front of both Riser and Yubeluna with the same bored look, on the contrary, Riser was scared shitless, nobody has ever told him that Rias has one of the strongest pieces in the underworld. The Invincible Knight, however, Yubeluna was the opposite, she is blushing like crazy while looking at Naruto's cool and careless face, even though she knew that to lust after anyone other than her master is wrong, still she couldn't help it. By the order of my Ojou Sama, I must reluctantly defeat both of you, I am sorry nothing personal really Naruto said plainly and scratched the back of his head. Ha, huh, never thought that the Invincible Knight was Rhea's lapdog. You didn't seem so tough though Riser taunted Naruto trying rile him up, though he failed horribly as Naruto's face remained expressionless. 
You are really horrible at playing psychologic games. Nawatari kun, chicken kun, if you are bad at it then don't reveal it so that you don't feel embarrassed in front of your foe. Naruto deadpan while waving his finger lecturing riser, which pissed the latter off greatly. Enough talking. I will end you and then make Rias my wife shouted riser furiously and materialize his hands to burning wings of a phoenix. Naruto simply looked up at riser with a calm look, then he turned to Yubeluna and claimed, Ojo-chan, I recommend you to back away from here as soon as possible, if you won't listen to my words I will tear your clothes to pieces and have my way with you right here, Naruto said those phrases with an expressionless face which made the effect on Yubeluna more devastating. W what? H how dare you say something so dirty with a straight face like that? You lewd monkey, sputtered Yubeluna with enormous blush and even have blood dripping from her nose from such erotic fantasy. Why are you worked up like that so easily? That was just a joke, simply a joke said Naruto with a mischievous smirk, then he waved a finger to shame her, tisk, tisk, who knew that Ojou Chan has such a dirty mind. Your master is not enough now you want to lay your hands on me as well. Yubeluna blushed like never before, she screamed in embarrassment and fury then charged at Naruto with a flaming bomb, at the same time, Riser created a huge fireball and threw it at Naruto. Naruto looked at the attacks with his M's calmly, when they nearly hit him, he raised his hands up and said one word to dismiss both of attacks. Amaterasu. Naruto's right eye began to bleed and from the void a pitch black flame appears and consumed both of Riser's and Yubeluna's attacks. Both were shocked that their techniques were defeated so easily. H how, that was a word whispered by those two in utter shock. Do you have any other trick? Naruto asked and turned the flames of Amaterasu off with his other eye, but I recommend you just surrender, why the heck are you so obsessed with my Ojou sama anyway? You've a peerage consist of sexy girls and still want more, that just too greedy, Nawadari kun, my Ojou sama has made it clear that she doesn't want to marry you. So just accept that fact, Naruto told him with a bored face and even sitting down in a lotus position and crossed his arms. I am not done yet, golden jerk, shouted Riser furiously and flew up high to create a huge burning sphere that resemble a sun, ha ha ha. Now I will end you with this technique, inferno catastrophe. And so he threw the technique at the waiting figure of Naruto, the heat produced by the technique was so much that it caused Naruto to sweat. Not a bad technique. Nawatari kun, but, Naruto wiped his sweat off his forehead, and his figure was enveloped by a purple figure that was building up from skeleton to armor. The figure has three hands, one holding a sakagari, the other holding a transparent shield, that last hand is holding a sphere made of Amaterasu flame. Suzano. Suzano then opened his sakagari and produced some kind of wavering sword, such a good flame, I even feel it will be a waste to seal it away in Tatsuka no Sarugi, but it will be fine. Naruto nodded his head in fake sadness and pointed Tatsuka no Tsurugi at the fake sun and absorb it all inside. Riser was gobsmacked that his most powerful technique was sealed away so easily, even Yubeluna was shocked as hell, it's the first time she saw her master's technique fail to defeat a foe. Naruto deactivated Suzano and looked up at Riser with a tick in his forehead, okay, I feel really annoyed now, I will count to three if you want surrender, I will just kick your ass. 3. 2. 1. Just as Naruto was about to call one, Riser shouted in fright, I surrender. Naruto nodded his head satisfied and began to approach Yubeluna, he saw she was full of bruises and opened his palm to chant, Recuperare. The glowing green light enveloped Yubeluna and began to heal her at ridiculous rate, in no time, she was as good as new, she looked at her hands in wonder then looked up at Naruto. Why, why, I told you before it's nothing personal, I simply act by Ojou Sama's command that is all, and you Ojou Chan also acted on your master's commands Naruto explained to her simply unknowingly made Yubeluna develop a bigger crush on him. Naruto turned back and began to leave, well, I will go back to my Ojou Sama now, take care Ojou Chan. My name is Yubeluna, by the way. Yubeluna screamed out at him, Naruto just raised his hand up to acknowledge her words, even though she still has some phoenix tears left she was grateful that he has healed her with his magic. With Rias and Issei, since the start of the battle, Issei dropped his jaw not once but thrice. First, because of what Naruto told Yubeluna with a straight face. Then when he heard that was a joke he started to grip his fist in frustration. 
The comical tears ran down his eyes, and of course, Rias felt extremely annoyed at Naruto's so-called harmless jokes. Not once in her short life she has ever made that annoying blonde blushed. Not even when she embraced him with her birthday suit. He just comments that she was really sexy and will be a dream of lots of guys. There was even in spoken rule in Underworld, whoever will make Naruto blush can claim him, no matter if it's a married female devil or not, that rule actually was created by Seraphal Leviathan, so far no one ever managed to make him blush but on the contrary he always will say something ridiculously shameless and the dismissed that by saying it was a joke, he would not even laugh about that, just have that annoying smirk all the time. Issei was also shocked about Naruto's ability, he has neutralized both of Riser and his queen's attacks with a pitch black flame. Then Riser launched an attack that resemble a mini sun. But that Naruto guy materialized a purple figure out of nowhere and enveloped himself with it, the purple figure then used the Sakagari on one of its hand and completely absorbs Riser's technique, during the entire fight that Naruto guy not even dirties his clothes, and that's just scary, Bushu and the others have struggled so much with Riser's peerage, and yet this dude just displayed a part of his power to make them surrender, now he understood the reason why he is Ria's strongest piece. During that time, Diedrag inside of Issei's right hand felt an enormous power sealed in the stone on Naruto's choker, Ibo partner, this guy is incredibly strong, and he even has a very powerful sacred gear that is sealed inside that stone. Nani, such a powerful guy and yet he still has a sacred gear. Issei muttered in shock gazing at the approaching figure of Naruto, just what kind of monster is this Naruto? Naruto is standing right in front of Rias right now, he then put his palm to his chest and bowed down respectfully. Ojo-sama, mission complete. Rias nodded her head satisfyingly with a victorious smirk, then as usual, her personality started to turn 180 when Naruto is around. Um, good job, my knight, Rias nodded satisfyingly but changed her expression to deadpan and point at him, but your punishment still won't go anywhere, understand? Naruto sweat dropped and wondered, why am I being punished again, ojou sama? Didn't you said it yourself, that it was your fault not mine? Rias blushed in embarrassment and point her finger shakily at him, s shut up. I am your king therefore I decide to punish you or not. Even Issei felt that is unfair to Naruto but he knew better to open his mouth when his bushu is like this. Naruto sighed and nodded his head tiredly, hi, hi, so what is my punishment, ojou sama? Rias smirked victoriously and pointed at Naruto and claimed, for now I order you to carry me on your back, I feel terribly tired from this fight, this will be your first punishment. Issei heard that and widens his eyes in shock, he felt extremely jealous of Naruto that moment, bushu. I also want for you to punish me, the comical tears ran down his eyes. Naruto yawned and muttered why me though? I can see it clearly that dude over there wants to do it more than me. I said, come here and carry me, ordered Rias loudly, then she looked to Naruto's eyes and saw that he still has his M's activated, and turned off your creepy eyes. Naruto gained a tick mark at her remark and retort, oi, don't call my eyes creepy, don't forget these eyes saved you plenty of times, baka. Nani. How dare you call your Ojou Samabaka? It's decided your punishment will be doubled, no, tripled. Issei looked at the pair with a sweat dropped, somehow they looked like an old arguing married couple to me. Naruto sat down and waited for Rias to climb to his back, she embraced his neck a bit tight then placed her mouth near his ear and whispered, Welcome back, Naruto. Naruto closed his eyes smiling a bit then he stood up and also whispered, I am back, Ojou Sama. With Sirzex and Grafia, five minutes before Naruto's arrival, Sirzex looked at the screen to observe the rating game between his sister and Riser Phoenix. So far he saw she handheld the situation really well. Despite not have the whole set of her peerage, but the situation turned worse when Riser's queen took out not only Kaneko, but Akino as well, on Rhea's side, only she, her knight. Kiba, newly reincarnated bishop, Asia and a pawn with the power of security, Issei, Issei has unlocked the new power of his boost gear and transfer the power to Kiba, the former used sword birth and successfully rid the rest of Riser peerage, but even so Kiba still not strong enough to defeat Riser's queen and was defeat in the end, Asia was with Rias the whole time so she was okay, Issei on the other hand was exhaust because he has yet to master the new power of his sacred gear. 
Rius decided to head to the enemy's side to confront Riser. Riser managed to trick Rius and took out Asia of the game. Asia was defeat by Yubeluna, the later using her specialty to cause explosion by her magic. Yar, yar, it seems my Ria Tan is having a rough time, even if this is her first raiding game. I can't believe that she is gonna lose wine Serzer CHS Lucifer and twirling a glass of wine in his hand. It seems Rias Sama will lose this game. Sears X Sama, if that happen will you really marry her to Riser Sama as agreed? Wondered Grafia, his maid, queen and wife, with expressionless look. Sears X then looked at the screen and noticed one more presence on the battlefield, looking at the newly arrived figure caused Sears X to grin. No. My Rhea Tan is not out of the game yet. What do you mean, Sears X Sama? Wondered Grafia in confusion. Surely, you don't think that Ojou Sama can win this game with just herself and that pawn, despite he has the power of security he has yet to master it. Sears X shook his head and grin never left his face, have you forget Grafia? Rias has the strongest knight in the history, the one, that I personally gave her. Grafia's eyes widened slightly at his response, no way. The invincible knight. Ye nodded Sirzex and added, the one that didn't have any fear in him, one that void of love, lust, shame, embarrassment, hesitation, jealousy, practically all emotions that will made him ever hesitated in a battle, and titles mean nothing to him, that's why the devils of high society despised him, they always said to put him in a proper place, but all they can is throwing words at him because they don't have power to do what they intend to do. I don't understand, Sears X Sama Grafia shook her head slightly, if he is that powerful, why did you give him to Rias Sama? I understand that she is your dear little sister, but he could have strengthened your peerage even more, besides if he is that powerful, why is he not ultimate class yet? Why I gave him to Rias? The reason is simple I want him to move on from his past a past that was so horrible that I don't ever wish on anyone else to experience something like that again, why he is not ultimate class devil. That is the story for another time, Grafia. Sears X then looked at the screen to see how Naruto is making fun of Riser's queen and then dismissed it as a joke, seeing that caused Sears X to burst out laughing hard. Ha ha ha, to say such things and dismissed as a joke in a mere second, that Naruto-kun is really hilarious and unique. But Grafia has a tick mark appeared when she saw her husband burst out laughing, that Naruto sure knows how to irritate people, then she saw Naruto materialized a purple figure that surrounds his body, curious about his abilities, Grafia turned to her husband to find out. What is that astral figure that was summoned by Naruto-sama, Sirzex-sama? Oh, that, replied Sirzex and squint his eyebrows in thought, EHM, ah. That is one of Naruto's abilities with his eyes. It's called Suzano, if I am not mistake, it actually has many other abilities that Naruto-kun still yet demonstrates, besides even I don't know all powers that his eyes possessed. Really, those eyes have other abilities as well. Grafia wondered surprisingly. Yeah, his eyes also have other modes as well Sears X added while still observing how Naruto used Suzano to consume Riser's strongest attack. So much power in a mere boy Grafia whispered silently to herself but Sears X still heard her and replied solemnly. You don't know how much he has lost when obtained this power, Grafia Chan. Grafia turned her gaze to her husband questionably, Sears X just looked silently to the screen to see the end of the game. With Sona, but Sears X and Grafia weren't the only ones watching the game, Sona Citri, the heiress to Citri family, along with her queen Subaki Shinra were observing the battle as well, after all this is her best friend first rating game. After witnessing the battle, Sona turned off the screen and muttered to herself. Who would ever think that Rias is the master of Invincible Knight? Sure everyone in Underworld knew that he is a knight but the information to whom he belonged was never revealed. Keicho, is that knight of Rias San really that powerful? Tsubaki wondered while adjusting her glasses. Yeah, I could tell clearly even though he was not serious at all in this battle, he still manages to defeat Riser and his queen easily, what we saw is about one. 5% of his power replied Sona with his eyes narrowed. But that means he is stronger than Rias San. That's absurd. I never heard that a piece is stronger than the king refute Tsubaki shook her head. As you can see, it actually could happen Sona said calmly. Tokyo, Issei's house. Everyone from Rias Peerage is looking at Naruto with a curious gaze. Naruto himself didn't show any emotion on his face. 
but just glance at each of them, they were all sitting at the living room and waiting to hear Rias' explanation. Everyone, meet my other knight, Naruto. Rias introduced Naruto to her peerage, then she turned to Naruto and remarked, Hora, Naruto. Introduce yourself to my peerage. Hey, he muttered Naruto carelessly, I am Naruto, no surname, never know it, I am Ojou Sama's knight, oh and I am her first piece of evil peace as well. First to greet him of course was the polite and disciplined Yudo. Nice to meet you, Naruto-san, also welcome to Rias Peerage, thank you for helping out our Bushu in the raiding game, Yudo raised a hand for Naruto to shake. You are welcome, but that was just my duty, to comply with any of Ojou Sama's wishes, that's the duty as her servant replied Naruto and shook Yudo's hand. Yudo smiled at Naruto's statement, this Naruto is sure so easy to get along with. Next to greet him is Akino, of course, being the flirtatious as she is, she couldn't help but try to seduce Naruto, it's only a bonus that Naruto is fairly good looking. Oh my, never knew Bushu has such a handsome knight, why did you hide him from us? Perhaps you afraid that I will snatch him away from you. Yufufufu Akino turned to Rias with mischievous eyes, and then cover mouth with her hand and closed her eyes with a taunt laugh. As if I need to hide him from you. Akino Rias shot back and then glanced at Naruto deadpan, it's because I gave him freedom to travel wherever he want, but when I need him he must return immediately that was my agreement with him. I see said Akino then turned to Naruto with a friendly smile, I am Akino Himahima, Rias queen, nice to meet you, Naruto-kun. The pleasure is mine, Himahima-san Naruto replied back with a smile, that immediately caused Rias to react. Hora, why the heck are you greeting Akino properly? but called me a tomato of destruction when we met for the first time. Rias demand furiously and pointing at Naruto. Do you need me to remind how you act that time? Ojou Sama Naruto retort calmly with deadpan eyes, that actually shut Rias up immediately, so she just huff and turned her head aside, the others were really surprised as this is the first time they saw Rias act like that, she is acting like a spoiled child. Tomato of destruction, why did you call her that, Naruto-kun? Akino asked curiously while giggling a little. Well, where should I start? Naruto tapping his chin with index finger with mischievous eyes and glancing at Rias playfully. Don't you dare, Naruto. Rias warned him with a very scary look, she even activated her power of destruction to make a point. Naruto laughed nervously and stated, Ah ha ha, I already forgot, it's been so long after all. Oh, it's a shame then. I thought I would have some material to blackmail our Bushu, whined Akino in disappointment. Naruto then turned to a petite girl that is munching chocolate chips, what is your name, Ojou Chan? Don't know why, but you actually remind me of a cat. I am Kaneko Tuju, nice to meet you, Naruto Senpei Kaneko greet him stoically. Kaneko, EHM. Naruto thought for a while then snapped his fingers as a nickname appeared in his mind. How about I call you Shironiko, then? Kaneko blinked it's the first time someone decided to give her a nickname, that's, acceptable, Kaneko nodded her head and took the other chip. Naruto then turned Issei with an interest look, you must be that famous pawn that not only consumed 8 pieces at once, but also a host to secure UT. Issei nodded his head and replied, that's right, I am Buckus Pawn and I will make my dream come true, for effect, he pumped his fist up to the air. And what is your dream? Issei gained a pervert look and began to drool, to build my personal harem of course. Is that so? But I am afraid you are already late, that Niwatori kun that I fought recently has already managed to build his harem, with that comment Naruto just add more salt to Issei's non-existent wound. You don't need to remind me about that. Issei shot back at Naruto with comical tears. Ha ha ha, what an interesting guy you are, Hayato-san, you deserve a great nickname. Naruto laughed out loud and nodded to himself, then he squint his eyes in thought, when an idea came to him, he again snapped his fingers and turned to Issei with a smirk, nay, how about Harem Kauti? How did that sound, huh? Harem Kauti, muttered Issei trying out his new nickname, then his smile widened and he shout, Harem Kauti. Yes, I like that, but Kaneko's comment caused him to cry comically. You are certainly the worst, Issei Senpei. Stop giving my servants your stupid nickname, Naruto Rias said in annoyance. They are not stupid, and actually suit them both, 
Ojou Sama retort Naruto and crossing his hands. Then he narrowed his eyes slightly at her and wondered, Perhaps you want one for yourself as well, Ojou Sama. You want me to change how I address you? Rias huff and turn her head aside. Huh, who need your stupid nicknames, and I am your king, therefore you're Ojou Sama, that won't change, ever. Naruto rolled his eyes at her comment. Why she always act like this when he is around, anyone just give him the damn answer. Asia was keeping silent the whole time, she is trying to be as close to Issei as possible, she is too shy to say anything to Naruto, not that he made her feel uneasy it's just that she is not good with dealing with strangers, especially males. Issei seeing Asia is still acting shy and nudge lightly to her ribs and whispered, come one, introduce yourself, Asia, he is a good person. H hi, Issei San Asia nodded hesitantly, she took a deep breath to prepare herself, A Anyo, my name is Asi Argento, and nice to meet you, Naruto San. Nice to meet you too, Argento San, I heard before you join Ojou Sama, you were an unright. Asia nodded her head carefully. So do you regret being reincarnate to a devil? Cause being a devil you can't pray to God after all. Anyo, I don't regret that, because by becoming a devil, I've met so many friends. Rias Bushu, Akino San, Kaniko Chan, Kiba San and Issei San, just that already made my extremely happy replied Asia with a cute smile. I see Naruto smiled slightly and nodded his head. Where Naruto will stay, Bushu? Wondered Akino suddenly. I haven't decided yet, but I will call my brother later to find out replied Rias while tapping her chin. If you not against it. I'd like for Naruto-kun to live with me at the shrine Akino proposed while turned her lustful look at Naruto, of course, Naruto just blinked back owlishly at her. Absolutely not, Naruto is my personal servant since I was eight, he must serve only me. Rias refute Akino's idea completely. Ojo-sama, if I must live with you, then I request no more climbing to my bed naked, and no more stripping me at midnight deadpan Naruto with crossed arms. What? shouted Issei and cried tears of jealousy at Naruto, you had slept with B-U-C-H-O-U. And that was not even once, he began to shake Naruto violently. Oi, oi, harem kauti, stop that, that was Ojou sama that always climb into my bed not otherwise Naruto tried to calm down the jealous security. Era, era, Bushu was already that naughty at such age. Akino asked teasingly, I just want to make him blush just once, but all attempts failed horribly Rias sighed in defeat. Then it was decided that Naruto will spend the night at a cult club room, Rias and Asia decided to stay with Issei while Kaneko and Kiba returned to their respective house. Next morning, Issei's house. The crew has gathered again at Issei's house, a surprised guest has decided to grace them with her presence, it was none other than Grafia. She has arrived to tell them about the congratulations party that Sirzex has opened to celebrate his sister's first victory in a raiding game. I bid goodbye for now, Rias Sama, and once more congratulations on your victory said Grafia stoically before she was teleported by Grimori's seal. It appears that my brother has host a congratulations party on my victory over Riser. Well, we should be going now, don't need to keep my Oni Sama wait replied Rias and turned to her peerage. Hi Bushu said everyone except naruto he found issei's old gameboy and is playing in it right now not hearing his response rias approached him with deadpan eyes and snatched his ear itai itai ojou sama release my ear at once i've heard you clearly naruto is pleading for her to let go of his ear and is wincing in pain don't ever ignore me naruto or it will be worse understand rias warned him with a chilling eyes Naruto nodded his head and when she let go of his ear, he sighed in relief. Now they remind me of mother and son, it's so confusing what kind of relationship do they have comment Issei with a sweat drop, and it's funny to see someone that had defeated that grilled chicken, being scolded by Bushu. I think their relationship is unique and cute added Asia smiling at Rias as she continued to scold Naruto while he just rolled his eyes, it seems he just want her to end her scolding ASAP so that he could return to his game. Era. Maybe Bushu had that kind of fetish, Yufufu, that comment came from Akino. Goddies, Underworld, Rias and her peerage have changed their clothes to suit the grand party, the first thing they saw is there are lots of people there, they all came here to congratulate Satan's sister on her first victory in raiding game. Rias spots Sona and Tsubaki, 
she decided to approach her with Akino, Yuto and Kaneko go to eat some food, well, Issei being the pervert he is couldn't take his eyes from young attractive she devils, Naruto is walking around with a bored look to pass the time, such grand parties are not in his taste at all. Congratulations on the winning again, Rias. Sona congratulated her best friend. Thank you, Sona, but actually that fellow over there did all the works replied Rias and pointing her big finger at the standing figure of Naruto in the distance. I know that, you never actually told me that you are the master of Invincible Knight, why is that wondered Sona curiously also glancing at Naruto to inspect him. That's because Onisama said that Naruto is a unique piece, it's not wise to reveal him to anyone, besides he is annoying like hell. Always tried make me the one who is at fault replied Rias and snort at the end. I remembered that during the raiding game, you said it yourself, that it was your fault reason Sona and adjusting her glasses. TCH, even so I don't like it when he is right and I am not Rias retort and huff. Sona could only sigh at her friend antics, but this Naruto has opened to her a new personality of Rias, one that she didn't know exists, and she noticed that she only act exclusively with him like that. That's certainly interesting. Naruto has caught the attention of many female devils with his good looks, but they also recognize him as Invincible Knight, as usual he will say something extremely shameless and dismiss it as a joke, clearly those female devils also knew that rule about him and tried to get their hands on him, though it's futile, no matter what they do they couldn't made Naruto flush. While the peerage is enjoying the party, Naruto decided to search for Sirzex to give him a not very pleasant surprise for trying to marry his Ojou Sama without her permission. Long time no see, eh, Naruto kun. Naruto turned his head to the right and saw Sirzex in an expensive suit waving and smiling at him. Naruto wordlessly approached Sirzex and punched him unexpectedly. Sirzex actually knew that Naruto will punch him, he even knew the reason why, that's why he let Naruto hit him but Naruto had monstrous strength which sent him flying a coup meters back and crashed to the ground. I don't need to explain why I did that right, Sirzex sama Naruto looked down at Sirzex calmly, like what he just did didn't bother him. Sirzex slowly stood up, cleaning the dust from his clothes and rubbing his cheek to ease the pain from Naruto's punch. Yeah, I promise to never do something like that again to my Ria Tan, Sirzex rubbed his cheek and winced in pain, even so that was brutal. Naruto kun, to punch me like that after we didn't see each other for so long. I wouldn't have punched you if you, Grimori sama and Venelana sama pulled a stunt like that Naruto retort with deadpan eyes, to me, Ojou sama's happiness if the first priority, Grimori clan business, political marriage, three faction wars, something like that are secondary, that's I want you to remember, Sirzex sama, Naruto remarks with an expressionless facade. I understand. Naruto kun Sirzex nodded his head and then turned to Naruto, but you also be careful out there, even knowing how powerful you are, I knew that there is someone that even you won't be able to handle. Don't worry about me, Sirzex sama, I had made a vow to never lose ever again, I will win in any situation replied Naruto looking serious like never before, those eyes, Sirzex had first seen when he picked him up in that accident of 8 years ago. The day Sirzex has found out that a new unique being was created in order to overthrow the four great Maos, Gregorian gods, the day he found out the existence of Ultimate. After the congratulations party, Naruto returned to the occult club to rest, the others have gone their way as well, Naruto turned his head aside to the right and felt that his head has touched something soft, the feeling is really pleasant so Naruto decided to dive his head further, but the moment he did that he heard a soft moan of female voice. Hearing that moan, Naruto could only guess one possibility, slowly he opened his eyes and indeed his Ojou sama is lying next to him with closed eyes naked, Naruto blinked for a minute then sighed and rubbed his temples. I should have known that old habits die hard Naruto muttered to himself still looking at the sleeping Rias, she has a smile on her face, actually every time she slept with Naruto, she had that smile, Naruto stared at his Ojou sama longingly for a while, and admit that she is indeed very beautiful, However he has lost such feelings as lust, shame even love, so even if Ojou sama will be interested in him, he won't be able to reply her feelings. Naruto sighed and then looked at the ceiling, he started to recall how he had obtained his Sharingan, and those memories sure are not pleasant at all. Flashback 11 years ago, Naruto is a 5 year old orphan, he has a small body for a boy his age and really thin, 
He never knew who his parents were. As far as he remembered he always lived in this orphanage. Naruto is a fairly intelligent boy for the boy of his age, and that's why he is always lonely because the kids his age couldn't understand what he says. Right now they were in the park and enjoyed themselves. Well, the kids enjoyed themselves, but Naruto is alone again. He just look at how the other kids play silently. Suddenly he felt someone tapped his shoulder do he turn his head back. He was immediately captivated by the innocence and beauty of the girl in front of him. The girl has jet black hair and shining blue eyes like him. She wears a white dress that suits her perfectly. You are Naruto-kun, right? Why did you not play with us? Wondered the girl cutely. Because they told me I am weird by saying those confused things, they think I am weird and don't want to play with me Naruro replied with a sigh. Oh was the girl's reply. Then she remembered that she didn't tell him her name. I am Kajayaki Yumi, by the way. E-H-M. I am Naruto, just Naruto, don't know a family name Naruto introduced himself to the girl. Nice to meet you, Naruto-kun. If you don't mind I will be your friends from now on. Exclaimed Yumi with head cute voice. Naruto blinked his eyes in surprise, you want to be my friend. Yuma nodded her head in affirmative, but nobody want to be friends with me, because I am weird. Well, I think you are just more advanced than the others, they couldn't keep up with your thoughts and therefore think you were weird retort Yumi. Naruto smiled widely as he got his first friend. And so as time passed, Naruto and Yuma became best friends, but as the time passed, Yumi also realized that she is falling in love with Naruto. Of course, Naruto was just a child and couldn't notice that. Even Yumi herself couldn't understand what is going with herself. Everything was fine, until they appeared, the Tengus from Yukai faction, to be more precise a Karasu Tengu by the name of Yadagarasu and Konoha Tengu by the name of Sojobo. Those two came and began to create chaos in the city. They killed lots of people and sealed their souls in some container. Those two were demons, they killed everyone in the city and spared only Naruto. When they realized that Naruto could become an ultimate, the goal that they are striving to achieve, Yadagarasu and Sojobo goal is to create ultimate, a being with powers that surpassed even God and all those powers were concentrated all in a pair of eyes. By injecting the blood to Naruto's veins, they managed to mutate his eyes and thus creating Sharingan, but Yadagarasu is very power hungry, he managed to find out a way to evolve Sharingan even more. One day, he managed to trick Sojobo and sealed him away in Naruto's Sharingan. Naruto's Sharingan began to evolve and transform to a pinwheel. Yadagarasu called it Mangeku Sharingan, and the final step in creating the ultimate, that's to consume all 5,000 souls in Mangeku Sharingan to gain a new powers. 1,000 souls for each power, where did Yadagarasu gain so many souls? He collected the souls in the three faction wars of course, but nobody actually knew about that. Naruto's Mangeku powers are, Sukuyomi, the power of absolute illusion, Amaterasu, the flame of eternity, Kamui, the power to distort space and even jump to his dimension, Kotoamatsukami, power of absolute control, and Suzano, the embodiment of Sojobo power, but Suzano has manifested before the consumption of souls, because that is the embodiment of Sojobo's power. By the time he consumed all 5,000 souls Naruto is no longer a human. But an ultimate, a being with powers surpassed even gods, by the way, Naruto has managed to combine some of his powers into one and accidentally invent something he called Eternal Mangeku Sharingan, it's basically took one form of his eyes to the base and infused the other form in it, not even four great mouths could compare to him, but in order for Naruto remain sane, he himself had got rid of emotions that could possibly drive him insane. With such powers Naruto completely wiped his creator to the floor with only fraction of his powers, but Yadagarasu was also cautious, he had infused a command in Naruto's head that he won't be able to kill him no matter what. After Yadagarasu managed to escape, the newly promoted four great mouths have appeared, they were of course shocked by seeing all the destructions, and only seeing an eight years old boy with a calm look on his face when he looked at them, that's when Naruto met all four great mouths for the first time. End flashback. Naruto shook his head to shake off those memories, how the heck he is still sane after that. Even he didn't know how, but Ajuka wants to keep the secret of Naruto being an ultimate, create a special piece of night for him, the story of how he met his king for the first time, that's the story for another time. Naruto then looked aside and realized that Rias has moved closer to him, since when did she manage that? 
Then suddenly Rias climb atop on his body and snuggled to his chest, a smile radiate from her lips, Naruto sweat dropped, seeing his king's actions, but he didn't stop her of course, the least he need is to disturb his Ojo Yusama's sleep, so Naruto just decided to close his eyes with a soft smile and fall to sleep again. Next day, Occult Research Club, Naruto groggily opened his eyes and already see his Ojo Yusama's face that was really close to hers, she has a mischievous grin with her blue-green eyes, she is still lying atop of him, by the way. Well, how is your sleep, Naruto? Did my presence made your sleep more pleasant? Rias asked seductively and blinking her eyes suggestively. On the contrary, Ojo Yusama, your presence here made me harder to fall asleep. Deadpan Naruto looked lazily to her eyes. Oh, is that because you are dreaming about me? Rias teased and pressed her breasts further at Naruto's chest to provoke him. No, Ojo Yusama, it's because you are stealing my space on my bed retort Naruto with deadpan eyes. Mo, why won't you ever blush? Rias whined like a spoiled little girl, that didn't get what she want and pouted. Naruto sweat dropped and remarked, Ho, oh, so that's what you are trying to achieve, Ojo Yusama. Rias sat up straight which revealed her voluptuous naked body behind the covers, she huff and then squeeze her breasts in front of Naruto, I don't understand. How could you not blush at all when you seeing this? Rias implied to her perfect bouncing ball of flesh, perhaps you are not even straight. Oi, I take offend to that comment, you know Naruto shot back when his Ojo Yusama imply that he is gay, that's the last thing, he wants her to think about him. Then prove to me retort Rias with a devious smirk. Huh, prove what? Naruto suspected what she imply, but still want to know for sure. Rias rolled her eyes at his question and stated, Duh, prove to me that you are straight of course. Naruto still decided to play an innocent card and pretend to ask, EHM, how? Rias has enough and was about to pounce at Naruto, but that moment a door opened and some people walked in, those people were none other than her peerage. Issei was the first one to react, of course, he appeared in a flash in front of Naruto and point accusingly at him. How dare you steal Bacchus' virginity from me, Naruto? That should have been me, and I really think that we could become friends. Naruto sighed out tiredly and then looked deadpanned at Issei, look here, harem obsessed idiot. Nothing happened between me and Ojo Yusama, she just sneaks into my bed like before that's all. Really? Issei asked hopefully. Naruto decided to not answer the idiot's question, yada. I still have a chance to take Bacchus' virginity. Issei pumped his fist in the air and cried tears of relief, but Rias just pouted when Naruto explained the situation between them, she would have thought at least this situation will make her progress, but no. Issei senpei, you are the worst replied Kaneko in monotone voice, which caused Issei to cry again. Era, but Bushu sure is naughty again. First Issei kun. Now you switch to Naruto-kun, that's too greedy, you know Akino joked with an amused smile, but her eyes still often glance at Naruto muscled figure that can be seen even through his t-shirt, Naruto wears a simple t-shirt with yin-yang design on it, and of course what Akino saw she liked very much, Rias noticed how Akino is checking her personal servant and gave her a light glare. Somehow Naruto feels that things will become even more troublesome now, he should have stayed in the underworld, no actually there is not safe as well who knows when that crazy Levia Tan decided to rape him. At the thought, Naruto felt shivers down his spine, everywhere is not safe, why the heck God hate him like that? Maybe because he has a power that could crush him like a bug. Bushu, you forget to inform Naruto-san that he will study in Kuo Academy from now on, right? Deduced Kiba. Rias decided to snuggle closer to Naruto, which made the later eyes twitch in annoyance, oh yeah. I totally forgot about that, the she turned her head to Naruto and said, Naruto, from now you are a student of Kuo Academy. Why the heck you didn't inform me earlier? Naruto deadpan looking down at his Ojo Yusama with apathetic blue eyes, I don't like school so why should I do that? Rias narrowed her eyes and leaned in closer to Naruto and retort, because I said so. You don't have a choice Naruto. As a punishment, today you must carry me in your hands to school. Naruto face fault and refute, why am I being punished again, stop. Don't answer that, I already deducted that, Naruto put his finger to her lips just as Rias about to respond, 
Rias actually blushed a little feeling his finger on her lips. Naruto the turned to the others and said, Now I want for everyone to go outside so we can change. Just as Issei was about to protest, Naruto added, Don't worry, I will go to the bathroom to change. Ojo-sama will change here. Rias pouted her lips, but she should expect that. If one day Naruto decided to change clothes in one room with her or bathing with her, that will be the day the world end. Naruto also noticed that Asia stayed silent the whole time, and surely she stayed as close to Issei as possible, maybe she actually felt something that others couldn't feel. After everyone go outside, Akino before exit actually wink at Naruto before leaving, of course, Rias was not pleased by her gesture. Scene change. Kuo Academy. All the girls are blushing red seeing a super hot blonde as carrying Rias Onisama in his arms. Surely the blonde has deadpan expression all the time, but that still didn't make him less attractive. Rias herself was very satisfied. She embraced Naruto around the neck with both arms and watches the look of jealousy on some girl's face, and sure behind them not so far, Issei is biting his shirt with tears of jealousy. But suddenly Naruto stopped as he felt two holy energies ahead of him. The energies were not that powerful so it definitely not angel, still what the heck servants of church doing on the territory of a devil, that he will need to find out. Issei just recently managed to get a contract with a seemingly human, the human request of him to spend one day in a week with him in exchange he will make contract with Issei. That human has a hobby of fishing really late at night, so Issei must often to return home very late, but he wasn't disappointed though because Asia will always on his bed in her birthday suit and sometime Akino-san, Issei looked a little down when he began to think about Rias Bushu. Since the day Naruto appeared, she didn't climb to his bed anymore, sure he knew that Naruto was Buka's first friend and they were really close, still he didn't like it, he noticed that Naruto is extremely strange though, he can't find any lust coming from him when he lied with a naked Rias on top of him. What are you thinking about so much huh, devil? Asked the human that he signed a contract with, it was an old man with short black hair and a yellow bang with cover his front, the man also has a beard, his eyes were purple like that of fallen angels that he saw. Um, nothing actually, replied Issei and turned his head to the man. Is that so, if you want to talk then I will listen, you help me out a lot from dying of bored after all the man looked at Issei and smirked. No, it's nothing really Issei refute, he then looked out to the sky and wondered. Will Bushu ever going to show him her opai anymore? Next day, elsewhere in the city, two figures were seen walking in a really large robes that cover their faces, nothing can be seen except the lower part of their face and the mop of hair, one figure has a mop of blue hair that was seen under the hood, the other has chestnut hair the rest was also hidden by the hood, the one with blue hair seems to carry something really big and has a form of a sword wrapped in bandages. I am so hungry, Xenovia Chan wind a figure with chestnut hair. The other figure sighed and said, it was our fault that we forgot to being food with us, now we must find the nearest church to spend the night first, about the food, a sound of stomach rumbling interrupts her statement. Gah, I am so hungry, I can't stand it anymore the figure with chestnut hair shouts out exasperatedly and raised her hands up in frustration. If you two are that hungry, then I may as well treat you for a lunch said a voice behind them. They were startled by the voice, because they couldn't feel, whoever is behind them, presence at all, when they turned to the direction of the voice they saw a very attractive teenage boy with lazy eyes, the boy wears a high collar white t-shirts with small yin yang symbol at the top corner on the right of his t-shirts and black pants that often was seen wore by kung fu master, Naruto decided to sneak out of the class. Today, surely he knows that he will get some punishments when Ojou Sama find out or even Sona Kaichu. But he already told Ojou Sama that he didn't have any attention to go to school. After changing his clothes in Kamui Dimension, Naruto decided to go to Game District, but the two figures in front of him caught his attention because of their holy energies, and based by their conversation, they are very hungry, so Naruto decided to help them out to find out what are they doing here in the territory of Rias Grimori. Hearing that immediately caused the chestnut figure to immediately appear in front of Naruto and asked really. You will treat us to a lunch. Naruto sweat dropped hearing her voice so excite like that. Guess this two were very hungry. Why yeah, I just can't walk away when I see two girls need help. Yay. The figure with chestnut hair jumped up and down happily. She then turned to Zenovia and stated, You hear that, Zenovia? 
This hot boy is gonna treat us to lunch. The figure with blue hair just smiled slightly and nodded her head. Well, let's go then, exclaimed Naruto. The two girls began to follow him. At some restaurant, after ordering some food, Naruto and the girls began to wait for their order, seeing them still in their robes. Naruto proposed, maybe you two should get out of those robes because eating in them won't be so comfortable. We are fine, thank you for concern refute the girl with blue hair, they are still wearing hoods by the way. At least, put down your hood then. Both of figures looked at each other and nodded their head, when they put down their hood, Naruto slightly raised his eyebrows, these girls are fairly good looking, the one with blue hair has a short hair style and has a green fringe on the right side of her hair, she also has dark yellow eyes. The one with chestnut color held her hair in twin tails, she also has big purple eyes that looked really innocent, unlike her partner whose look is more mature. The girls also checking out the boy in front of them, he has spiky yellow hair with the front bangs slightly cover his eyes and the side bangs framing his face, he had a slight mundane look, that is strange, because as far as they know males always ogle when there are beautiful females in front of them, yet this boy seems indifferent about that fact, one more thing that made them curious is that they felt a slight holy energy coming from him, does this boy is like them as well. When the food was brought to them, both girls began shove as much food to their throat as possible, seeing that sight, caused Naruto to sweat drop, these two maybe didn't eat for a week to be this hungry, after they finished, both began to pay their stomach. Ah, I feel do full now, exclaimed the girl with chestnut twin tails, she then turned to Naruto with her big innocent eyes and prayed, thank you for your kindness. May God bless you. Normally hearing that if Naruto was a devil then he will feel headache, but as an ultimate, things like curses and prayers did not affect him. It's nothing, really, I just help out the two girls in need retort Naruto and drinking his lemon tea. Still you are the only one that decided to help us, I appreciate that replied the girl with short blue hair. Well, let's introduce ourselves first, for start, I am Naruto, no family name, what about you two? I am Zenovia Quarta, nice to meet you, Naruto-san Zenovia bowed her head politely in greetings. My name is Irina Shido, it's a pleasure to meet you, Naruto-kun Irina winked playfully at him. Zenovia decided to ask the question that was on her mind right away, I feel a bit of holy energy coming from your body, Naruto-san, could you explain me why is it in you? Naruto felt a bit surprised, he has a bit of holy energy in him. That fact he heard for the first time, sorry, Quarta-san, but I, myself, didn't know that it exists in me until you point that out. I see replied Zenovia, this boy didn't even aware that he has holy energy in him. That's strange, thank you once more for treating us, Naruto-san, but I think it's time we must leave, you can come to nearby church to visit us if you want though. Yeah, I will be glad to see Naruto-kun any time, exclaimed Irina energetically. With that both girls stood up and left him alone there. Naruto is still thinking about the new information that he recently find out about himself, there is holy energy in him, the question is, how did it appear in his body? He then looked at his watch and sighed, it's still so early, he may as well visit the game district to kill the time. That evening, a cult research club room, the atmosphere in the room was mix of rage, amusement and even fear, well rage coming from Rias, she couldn't believe that annoying idiot decided to ditch school on the second day. She has been lectured by Sona to control her servants more strictly, amusement is coming from Akino, that Naruto-kun sure is amusing he could rile up Bushu any time he wants not only that he decided to do whatever he wants, fear is coming from Issei, sensing Bucus rage cause Issei tremble in fear, he was not foreign from female fury after all. Kaneko and Kiba were also in the room, Kaneko is reading manga while eating choco chips, Kiba though keep silent, he just looked down to the ground in deep thought, yesterday, when he accidentally noticed a holy sword on Issei's child photo he started to recall his goal, why he exists, and then not long after that, he encountered the same crazy exorcist freed, he is the only survivor of the holy sword project, and he has devoted his life to destroy all fragments of Excalibur. That Naruto, how dare he ditches school just right after he was registered to it yesterday. Rias shouted out furiously. But didn't Naruto senpai already told you that he hated schools Kaneko replied in monotone voice while not taking her eyes from the manga. He still didn't have any right to ditch class. 
Do you how much I need to hear Sona lecture me about controlling my servant more strictly retort Rias while holding her temples? Era, era perhaps Naruto-kun decided to hang out with other girls, perhaps he just wants to hide the hidden pervert in him. Akino exclaimed with mischievous eyes, but he joke didn't work because Rias has a deadpan expression on her face. E, e is a time Murray. It's about Naruto we are talking about. And he is such a prude, he sure as hell won't ever do something like that, unknown to both though, Akino actually was right. Forgot to mention Asia, she is keeping herself close to Issei as usual, Asia was confused about Naruto when she first met him, this fact only she noticed maybe because she was a former nun, but Naruto has a bit of holy energy on him, and she could see through the illusion that he put himself as a devil. Naruto is not a devil that Asia was sure of, but then why did he need to hide that fact by pretending to be a devil? It seems Naruto-kun won't appear any time soon, nay, Bushu. Akino looked out to the window and the sky began darken. It seems so, I forgotten to mention this, but yesterday I felt two humans with holy energy that entered our territory, be careful out there, everyone Rias warned her peerage and narrowed her eyes cautiously. That night, Issei's house. When Issei and Asia returned home, they immediately noticed two holy energies inside his house, Issei and Asia rushed to his house in hurry and worry, unknown to them, Naruto has Kamui himself on top of Issei's roof and looked down as both of them run in the house. When he reached the living room he heard a cute female laugh coming from the room, Issei slowly opened the door and saw two attractive girls wearing robes sitting opposite of his mother, the girl with chestnut hair immediately noticed Issei and exclaimed. Long time no see, Issei-kun, Issei just blinked in confusion, did he know this hottie? R, don't you remember me, it's me, the girl is pointing at herself and smiles cutely. Issei still couldn't recall the girl so his mother decides to refresh his memory by showing the photo album, she showed the same picture that Kiba has accidentally put his eyes on yesterday. Look here, this girl in the photo is Shido Irina chan Issei was surprised hearing that because he actually thought that the girl in the photo with him is actually a boy, because of what she wore back then. Huh, but, that was all Issei could spell. She was such a tomboy back then, but now she has grown up to a real beauty, nay. Said his mother with a smile. Sorry to disappoint you, Hayato-san, but I actually found someone more suitable for me than Issei kun Irina retort while thinking about that mystery boy she met and treat both her and Zenobia to a lunch. A. Eh? That's disappointing, Issei's mother whined in slight grief. I really thought that you were a boy back then exclaimed Issei, that actually surprised his mother. That's just rude, Issei. How could you but Irina decided to interrupt her. It can't be help, I look like a boy back then after all, Irina then narrowed her eyes slightly like she knew something, so many things have changed since we part ways, right? You can never tell how people will change. Zenovia though just glance at both Asia and Zenovia with apathetic gaze. Not feeling anything dangerous Naruto decided to Kamui back home, but when he arrived there, a very piss off Rias was standing there and tapping her feet rapidly, Naruto began to sweat from nervousness, sure he knew what the result of his action will be, and that didn't change the fact that his Ojou Sama is looking very scary right now. What do you have to say for yourself, Naruto? Rias asked with a chilling voice. Nothing, I already told you I don't like schools, you can't force me to go there retort Naruto calmly and lied down at the sofa. Do you know how much troubles I get from Sona, huh? Exclaimed Rias and putting her hands on her hips, her eyes are squinting in displeasure. Hi, hi I won't ditch school anymore, Sai school is such a pain replied Naruto lazily and looked up at the ceiling. Rias decided that it's enough nagging at Naruto for now. She sudden jumps on him and buries her face in his chest, Naruto looked down lazily at the top of her head and exclaimed. When will you stop doing this, Ojou Sama? Rias looked up at him playfully and also answer his question with the other question. When will you stop asking when I will stop doing this, huh, Naruto? Naruto rolled his eyes and made a che then closed his eyes again, Rias decided to enjoy the moment for a while before she fall asleep. Next day. Occult Research Club, Zenovia and Irina decided to meet up with Rias Grimori to talk to her about their business, everyone was present, except for Naruto, he is standing outside the room right now, no need to reveal himself as part of Rias' peerage when it's not necessary. 
I appreciate your cooperation. I am Zenovia. Zenovia introduced herself. I am Shido Irina said Irina with her cute voice. Well, for what reason would servants of God desire to meet a devil? Wondered Rias and crossed her arms under her busy as well as crossed her legs. We are here to return the stolen three fragments of Excalibur that was stolen by fallen angels explained Irina, hearing that caused everyone from the peerage to gasp in surprise. Stolen, repeated Issei. The ones we have are this, the Holy Sword of Destruction, Excalibur of Destruction, Xenovia present them the huge sword that she carry along. And my Holy Sword of Mimicry, Excalibur Mimicry, continued Irina winking and showed a rope that wrapped around her left biceps. So what do you want from us? wondered Rias. This matter is between us and fallen angels, we can't afford to deal with devils of this city stated Xenovia with serious look. You really thought that we would side with fallen angels to do something to the holy swords? Retort Rias and her eyes became more seriously. Xenovia met her with the same gaze and replied, Devils hated holy swords, you are in the same position as fallen angels. Rias felt piss off that can be seen through her eyes as they began to glow crimson. If need we will deal with you as well, Rias Grimori, it doesn't matter if you are the sister of one of Mao's warned Xenovia with cold voice. You are well informed, but I will at least say this, I will never side with a fallen angel exclaimed Rias with certainty. That is good to hear, I know that Mao's sister is not that foolish, we will be on the way now said Xenovia then both she and Irina prepared to leave, Rias invited them to drink tea but Xenovia declined and said that she has no intentions to befriend a devil. Xenovia then looked at the corner of her eyes at Asia. Since the moment I stepped up in Hayato Issei's house I felt a familiar presence, are you Asia Argento? Demand Xenovia looking at Asia. H. Hai replied Asia with soft voice. I never thought I'd see a witch here exclaimed Xenovia with apathetic eyes, Asia eyes widen in surprise at being called a witch again. Oh, so you are the same ex-nun that was exiled for the ability of not healing devils, but fallen angels as well. Never imagined that you'd become a devil added Irina. Asia is looking down to the ground in shame and distress, she couldn't justify herself because what they said is the truth. To think that a saint became a devil, what a disgrace said Xenovia disdainfully. Tam, shut the hell up, Issei shouted out in irritation, he can't let those two insult Asia anymore. Issei Senpei Kaneko stopped him before her could charge at those two, he nearly forget that if he did things carelessly then there will be a war between church and devils. Do you still believe in our god? Xenovia asked Asia while still looking at her with apathetic eyes. Xenovia, she is a devil, you know remind Irina. Still, some heretics feel some guilt and retain a little of their faith, I can sense that from her. Really, Asia could only look down to the ground in distress. Asia San, do you still believe in the Lord, even though you are a devil? Irina asked Asia innocently. I I just can't forget him. I've believed in him my whole life countered Asia meekly. In that case, let us kill you no now, I am sure God will forgive you for your sins exclaimed Xenovia shocking everyone. Rias has enough and was just about to threaten the blue-haired girl that she won't let anyone belittle her servants. Now, that's just not nice at all, Xenovia san, after I treated you two to a lunch, you insult my friend like that Naruto stepped in the room which startles everyone because none of them felt his presence. Xenovia and Irina were surprised to see Naruto appeared, does that mean that he is also the servant of Rias Grimori? But that just absurd if that is true that why the heck is there a holy energy in him? He is a devil, right? Naruto-san, I am surprised to see you here replied Xenovia calmly looking at Naruto. Naruto-kun, Hidoi yo you deceive us by hiding your devil energy. And I thought we will be a perfect couple, whined Irina and holding her heart with fake tears. Hearing some stares drilling at him, Naruto started to sweat a little, damn that girl in her mouth. Era, era it seems I was right after all, Bushu, exclaimed Akino teasingly, Rias just drilled him with a deadpan gaze. Issei ignored all that he want forgive that Bluenet for insulting Asia like that. You two are just fools that blindly follow the rules of the church. Someone like you can't possibly understood Asia's kindness and sufferings. Issei glares daggers at Xenovia and clutched his fist tightly. Naruto glanced at Issei and saw he is indeed furious right now, it will be a perfect chance to see what Sekiruti is capable of and to see how strong Irina and Xenovia are. Then how about a friendly spar, 
EHM. Naruto proposed while crossing his hands. Naruto. Exclaimed Rias at such idea, she didn't need for Issei to get hurt by fighting holy sword wielders. It's fine with me that statement coming from Kiba, he is leaning to the door with crossed hands and glare slightly at both saint girls, it felt like you just read my mind, Naruto-san. And who are you supposed to be? Zenobia turned to face Kiba. Your senpei Kiba replied plainly. Yudo. Exclaimed Rias. Senpei. Repeated Zenobia and narrowed her eyes slightly. I am the only survivor of Holy Sword Project explained Yudo calmly. Hearing that Naruto narrowed his eyes a bit, so he was also a victim of the experiments in humans, we've something in common now, Kiba-san. Rias looked sternly at Naruto. Naruto glanced back at her and sent her a silent message with his eyes, if things goes too far then I will step up. With that both saints and Rias Knight and Pawn went outside for the spar, the rest followed them to observe the spar. Asia looked slightly guilty because this fight happens because of her. Then she glanced at Naruto from the corner of her eyes, she still felt the same holy energy coming from him, how is that possible? A devil can't have holy energy in him. But Naruto didn't feel like a devil either, for some reason unknown only she could sense that, Naruto is hiding himself as a devil in the eyes of Bushu and the others, Asia knows one thing for sure, Naruto is not a devil nor he has fallen angel, could Naruto be a spying angel? No that's absurd as well. Just who is Naruto really? Asia really wants to find the answer to that question. Issei and Yudo stared at their opponents calculatingly and prepared to fight when need. Well, that was on Yudo's mind. In Issei's mind, he can't wait to see those wondrous figures of two maidens underneath those heavy cloaks, just thinking about that his expression has turned lecherous with him knowing about that. From aside, Rias and Akino noticed Issei's change of expression and sighed at his perverse mature. The sigh came from Rias, while Akino is giggling amusingly, Kaneko gained a deadpan look on her face when she looked at Issei. Naruto is the only one with neutral face, he find Issei interesting and now he wants to know why. Okay, harem kauti. Show me how security fight. Naruto exclaimed and crossed his hands. Issei turned to Naruto with fire of passion in his eyes, he pointed at Naruto and shouted. Yosha. Now I am gonna show you how I fight, emotionless Yuru. Behold the power of Buckus Pawn. Just as he finished that statement, Irina has charged at him with her Escalibur mimic, she aimed at his stomach but Issei managed to jump back to avoid, though barely as her attack gave him a tear on his shirt. Issei looked down at the tear and sighed in relief, that was close. But Irina continued to assault him which caused Issei to dodge every slash. Meanwhile, Yuto and Zenovia have their own battle, Yuto activated his sword birth, which piqued Zenovia's interest. Sword birth. I remember that there was a subject that has such sacred gear in the holy sword project, I see, so that was you stated Zenovia and unclothed her Escalibur destruction. At the sight of the sword, Yuto began to laugh out loud, Zenovia hearing his laugh narrowed her eyes and wondered. You are laughing, yes. Because after so long I finally found something that I must destroy replied Yudo and picked up one of the sword created by sword birth. Zenovia rushes forward with her Escalibur destruction and engage Yudo. Yudo intercepted the strike, but he was barely holding it off, he was forced to jump back to analyze the situation. TCH even if it is only a fragment of the original Escalibur, the power of it is still bothersome, to destroy all seven won't be so easy. We are at disadvantage here. Just a scratch from a holy sword is enough to harm a devil badly comment Akino and embraced her waist as she observed the battle. Yuto can compensate that disadvantage with the knight's speed, but Issei, Rias comment but when Irina's sword accidentally clashed with his gauntlet nothing happened. His left hand already belongs to a dragon so holy swords won't work on his left arm anymore replied Naruto analyzing the battle, then he glanced at the battle between Yuto and Zenovia. Kiba-san may have speed but Zenobia-san has more experience, after all, she was trained to fight with holy swords since she was little after all. Rias was about to refute, but must admit that Naruto was right, both Yudo and Issei still have little experience in a battle much like herself and Akino. Rias then turned to her second knight and wondered, just how could he analyze the result of the battle from quickly by just observing it for some minute. Issei has held off against Irina for a while, the girl started to feel irritated and pouted. Why are you so strong, Issei-kun? You should nt be this strong. I am not the same Issei that you know anymore. 
and will prove to you that with my next attack, declared Issei and pointed at Irina, in response to his words Boost Gear screamed. Boost. Issei gripped his fist tightly with fire in his eyes. Explosion. Issei's body was covered by green energy from his sacred gear, he even revealed his devil wings, he began to charge at Irina with a pervert smirk. Irina looked innocently at her childhood friend and wondered what he planned, but her instincts told her to avoid Issei's touch at all cost. Dress. Break. Kaneko decided to speak for the first time since the battle start. Be careful Irina-san. Issei Senpei can rip off any female clothes to nothing with mere touch, when saying this Kaneko has a deadpan look. Hora. Why are you helping the enemy, Kaneko-chan? Issei shouted at Kaneko. Because you are the enemy of all females Kaneko replied her deadpan expression remain on her face. What a horrible and pervert move Issei-kun. I see that you weren't just being turned to a devil but your heart is being taint as well Irina gasped and hold her heart dramatically, then she clasped her hands to pray, oh, Kami-sama. Please forgive such a pervert like Issei-kun. But Naruto seems to have different thought about Issei's pervert technique, he nodded curtly to himself and muttered analytically. Naruhodo, this technique was created to steal modesty from females as they worried about it very much, and when they tried to cover their modesty, you can knock them out with one move, as expected of Sekiruti. Rias sweat dropped then turned to Naruto with deadpanned eyes, how the heck he turned Issei's technique by his comment to a useful technique. Meanwhile Yudo has difficulty with Xenovia, surely he was faster but his speed is useless, because that Excalibur could create explosion if the user desired but he won't give up so easily, with sword birth, Yudo created a huge demonic sword and declared. Your strength is impressive, but how about now? Your Excalibur destruction or my demonic blade? Let's see who will win. Yudo charged at Xenovia, but it seems the weight of the blade is too much for him and slowed him down a bit, but that was all Xenovia need, she sidesteps Yudo's slash and hit him with sword guard which knocked the air out of Yudo. Yudo, Rias exclaimed worriedly, Yudo fall to the ground and glared at Xenovia from his position, Xenovia looked down at Yudo coldly and mocked. I won Senpei. With that Xenovia turned her back and started to walk away, but she stopped and glanced back at Yudo from the corner of her eyes. I will at least tell you this, the one in charge on that inhuman project was Valpier Galilei, and the one that helped him in that matter was a rogue exorcist, they both were exiled and considered heretics, you hatred towards all holy sword users are ridiculous. After those words Xenovia walked away carelessly. W wait. Yudo gasped and raised his hand to reach out at Xenovia. With Issei. Issei tried to use his dress break on Irina. But she was too swift for him. In the end, Issei failed to rip off her clothes. But accidentally destroyed Kaneko and Asia's clothes, which earned him a super powerful punch from Kaneko. Rias immediately covered Naruto's eyes with her hands when Kaneko and Asia were stripped naked. Akino actually looked amused, seeing how Rias covered Naruto's eyes so that he won't be able to see them naked, it seems Rias didn't have a problem with Naruto seeing her naked, but she was against for him to see other girls' birthday suits, how interesting. Irina pitied her childhood friend so she sat down and lectured him with her cute voice. Don't do it ever again, okay? Your perverseness will only bring more pain to your life. Like hell, muttered Issei and began to stand up slowly. Then he looked up with fire of passion in his eyes and shouted. Like hell I will stop. My goal is to destroy all female clothes in the world, then all females will walk around naked. That was the ultimate goal that I am striving to. Irina sweat dropped and deadpanned, how can you set about such a horrible goal with self-righteous expression? You are really a hopeless pervert. Naruto's eyes were still being covered by Rias' hands, what the heck is wrong with this girl? She didn't have a problem with him looks at her naked, but she refused to let him see the other girls naked. Ojo-sama, I think you can uncover my eyes now. Seeing that Akino has brought out new clothes for Asia and Kaneko, Rias uncovered his eyes, but decided to stay by Naruto's side. Naruto turned to Rias with a boring look, why did you cover my eyes, Ojo-sama? Because you was about to see Asia and Kaneko naked Rias replied simply. Naruto sweat dropped at her reasoning, so it's okay for me to see you naked, but not other girls. I am your Ojo sama therefore you must look only at me, and if there is a body that you can look at naked then it is mine Rias replied and flicking her crimson hair to the wind. Naruto looked deadpanned at Rias and refute, 
Since when servants allowed seeing their masters naked, hum. You you're a sigh. Why do you even complain about that? Maybe you actually want to see Asia and Kaneko naked. Perhaps you are a closet pervert. Rias stampeded at Naruto's remark and began to accuse him. Now where did that come from? You know well enough that I am not a pervert Naruto replied calmly with a roll of his eyes. Rias felt frustrated seeing her idiot knight act so calmly, he just is pissing her off to no end. And it seems their arguing has caught the attention of both fighters, Irina puffed her cheeks cutely and glared slightly at Naruto, she didn't like the fact how close Naruto is to Rias. Yeah, right, just what he need one more troublesome girl that glares at him for no reason. During the fight, Issei was injured to the stomach by Irina's sword, the effect was immediately as he could feel strength leaving him, he couldn't even maintain his sacred gear and fall to the ground passed out. It seems the fight is over, I appreciate that you girls didn't kill my servants with holy swords Rhea stepped up to both exorcists. Then you would keep your part of bargain, right? Zenobia replied looking at Rhea. Yes, of course, but I want to know did you find out about which fallen angel stole those holy swords? Rhea wondered curiously. We managed to find out that all those doings come from one of the leader of Grigori, Kokobil Zenobia stated which surprised Rhea. Before us, there was the exorcist, but he was killed brutally added Zenovia. Naruto helped Yudo to stand up as he could barely stand after the battle, with the help of Naruto, Yudo stood up and informed them. It was Freed Selzen, coincidentally I witnessed his murder, and he is carrying a holy sword with him. A rogue exorcist, muttered Zenovia narrowing her eyes, she then looked up at Yudo to thank him, I appreciate for that valuable information, now we will leave. Isekun. If you want to die, come to me anytime Irina said cutely and kissed her crest, the she turned to Naruto and winked at him, and you Naruto-kun, can call me anytime you want, I will welcome you anytime, Chu, Irina sent a butterfly kiss to Naruto. With that she ran to catch up with Zenovia. Certainly a deadpan expression appeared on Rhea's face again, a tick mark appeared on her forehead and she uttered his name slowly and dangerously. Naruto, Naruto sighed again and rubbed his temples, he will soon turn crazy from his Ojou Sama mood swings. Naruto couldn't understand a simple fact that Rias is jealous. Akino is giggling amusingly at the sight, somehow the interaction between Rias and Naruto become her famous comedy movie. Scene change. After some arguing with Rias, Yuto walked out of the club silently. He did that knowing without her permission he could become a rogue devil, but even so he must destroy those swords for the sake of his friends. Yuto looked up to the darkened sky and sighed. He knew that what he did was ungrateful because Bushu has given him life once more, he owned her his life. There are things that Ojo Sama can't understand, Kiba San Naruto walked up to him, if you still want to pursue your goal, I can help you. Why do you want to help me, Naruto San? Yuto wondered looking at the blonde. You don't know this, but we have some things in common replied Naruto looking at Yuto blankly. Like what? I am a former subject for experiment as well Naruto said calmly and waiting for Yudo's reaction. As expected, Yudo widens his eyes hearing that, but he calmed down and muttered, I see. But the difference between us is that I didn't let the feeling of vengeance to consume me, and we lost different things in those experiments, you lost your friends while I, was forced to throw away something to keep myself sane Naruto replied calmly like what he is saying is completely normal. Something to keep yourself sane. Yuto repeated with questionable look, what is that? Naruto keep silent for a while then responded, maybe I will tell you some other time, so do you want my help or not? Yuto smiled gratefully and bowed his head, I will be forever grateful for this, Naruto-san. Naruto just dismissed him by waving his hand, no need to bow your head, I know that Ojo sama will be piss off when find out about me going with you but I have heard her lecturing about hundreds of times, 101 won't be a difference. Next day at night, Naruto and Yudo were not the only one that decided to go for hunting the rogue exorcist though, Issei and Kaneko had somehow managed to convince Saji from Sona Sitri's peerage to join them, Issei and Kaneko want to help Yudo as they are friends, they had met up with Zenovia and Irina, that were hungry and without money again, they treated them to a lunch and proposed to form an alliance, Zenobia agreed because this time their enemy is one of the leaders of Grigori. With Rias and Sona, Rias and Sona are enjoying the sauna, Sona is tapping her naked body with big leaves to massage her body. You know, 
Rias, that Naruto wasn't present in class, but the teacher still marked him like he was present, he used hypnotic magic on the teacher, your other night sure is bothersome said Sona taking a sit next to her best friend. That, troublemaker, and he even promised me that he will attend class. Rias fumed at the fact that Naruto fooled her once again. Well, based on the class journal, he could be count as being present, but that's still not okay with me Soma then turned to Rias and asked, I heard Kiba-kun has left you. And it seems Naruto-san is with him as well. Yeah, but I won't ever let him go, he is from my peerage after all, and Naruto, I don't need to worry about him. Naruto never did anything without a reason before, the fact that he wanted to help Yudo may somehow connect to his past Rias exclaimed and crossing her hands under her bosom. I am interested just how strong is Naruto-san and why did he decided to stay in your peerage? Sona asked curiously. Naruto was given to me by Nisama, he told that Naruto will be my personal servant and will always stay by my side, but I found that by chaining Naruto to myself will make his life boring, that's why when I've become strong enough to protect myself, I gave him some freedom Rias explained with nostalgic smile. I noticed you were pretty overprotective and obsessed with him Sona stated that is a fact. Rias decided to be at least honest with her best friend. To tell the truth, I am really attracted to him, even knowing he always pissed me off with his non-caring expression, for some reason, I don't want for him to look at the other girls when they expose their body, Naruto also seems to lost the feel of lust, his reaction to females naked body completely different from other males, you know, even your sister created a rule whoever make him blush will have a right to claim him, but that is impossible, I am telling you. Rias was frustrated at all her failed attempt to make Naruto blush. Onisama pretty much was obsessed with Naruto-san as well, as far as claiming him to be her future husband Soma sighed recalling her troublesome childish Mao sister that always embarrassed her in public. Rias narrowed her eyes after hearing that fact, she won't ever hand Naruto to any females, be it Mao, goddess or archangel, Naruto will remain with her, forever. Their conversation was interrupt when a mini magic seal appeared, from them, the astral figures of Akino and Tsubaki revealed. Sorry for disturbance, Bushu. Good job, you two stated Rias. Yes but a little late added Sona, so what is the situation? We are in big trouble Tsubaki informed her king, that caused both heiresses to narrow their eyes. With Naruto and Yudo, by using Sharingan to trace the holy energy, both boys arrived at a certain location. Yudo could easily recognize it as the place where they first killed a rogue devil with Issei, the devil was called Visor, upon arriving at the place, Naruto felt a presence ahead of them and raised his hand to stop Yudo from advancing forward. What's wrong Naruto-san? Yudo asked the blonde, I felt two presences inside that place, one was very close to us, the other is currently inside the building Naruto informed Yudo about enemy's location. Suddenly, a shadow descent fast at them. Naruto managed to warn Yudo in time to intercept enemy's attack, it was none other than Freed Selzin, a rogue exorcist that they hunting, Freed jumped back and land at the top of the building, he has a psychotic look as usual. Oya, Oya, what are two little devils so late here? You two didn't hunting poor old me right? Freed mocking them and stack out his tongue creepily. At the same time, Issei and Kaneko together with Saji arrived in time disguising themselves as saints, they were surprised that Naruto was there with Yudo. Naruto-san, what are doing here? Issei exclaimed, then he looked up and saw the bastard that had hurt Asia badly, freed. Bastard. Naruto turned his head to face them and deadpanned, I am the one that should ask that question, what are two doing here? This is none of your business. We want to help, Yudo-senpei retort Kaneko with her soft voice. I didn't volunteer to come but those two force me to tag along Saji accusing Issei and Kaneko. It doesn't matter now, we have the enemy up there, prepare for the battle Naruto ordered them but he actually was the only one that stood in relaxed stance. Hum, five against little old me. That's a little much to handle Freed said with fake concern then laughed maniacally, just joking. With my holy sword, I can cut you all to pieces. All the devils there felt unease at the sword, no mistake there that Freed was holding one of Escalibur. I am your only opponent, they will just stand aside to observe declared Yudo and charged at Freed with a sword in his hand, both opponents began to clash swords with each other and move very fast for the eyes of normal human to see. But Freed wasn't so simple either, he could easily keep up with Yudo, 
The others couldn't see anything because of their speed but Naruto could see their movements with ease even without Sharingan. Kuso. That freed is actually keeping up with Kiba's speed Issei cursed silently, if only we could slow him down a little. Slow down, you say. That I can do replied Saji with a smile and activated his sacred gear, absorption line, it has the appearance of small black gauntlet that has the shape of chameleon head, Saji launched its tongue and wrapped around Freed's leg. Whoa, you also have sacred gear. You are really cool, Saji exclaimed Issei in awe. Freed was surprised at the sudden attack, he tried to cut that annoying rope with his holy sword but couldn't. Kuso, again those annoying dragons Freed cursed. And it is even one of the dragons. That's so cool, Issei couldn't hide his excitement. All that time Issei is gathering dragon's power in his boost gear to transfer it to Yudo, Kaneko suddenly pick him up and threw him at Yudo with one word, fly. Issei was sent flying to Yudo and transfer the dragon's power to him, using the dragon energy given by Issei, Yudo used sword birth with intention to finish off Freed, Freed destroyed the swords create by sword birth desperately, suddenly all of them heard a voice that was slowly heard from the entrance below. Sword birth, huh? A very rare sacred gear that in right hand could become a dangerous weapon. Freed looked down and saw a bald old man with glasses wearing saint clothes. Valpier Gigi. At hearing that name, Yuto's eyes widen in rage and utters the name like a curse. Valpier Galilei. So he is the one in charge of Holy Sword Project Naruto muttered to himself looking at the immoral archbishop. It seems you still didn't fully master how to wield a holy sword. Freed exclaimed Valpier and looked up at Freed calmly. Then teach me how to do it right. Demand Freed. Just channel in the sword, that will make your attack stronger Valpier instructed the rogue exorcist. Freed did as he was told and channel his holy energy in the sword, the sword began to glow with golden energy surrounding it. I see, by channeling the holy energy in my sword, I can even cut that annoying rope Freed said with a psychotic grin and cut down lines rope easily surprising Saji. Now I will cut you down, brat, it's time for round two. Freed charged at Yudo with impressive speed but a kick blast him away. Valpier turned to see who had intervened and exclaimed, Ho! Oh, so you were the successful project of Ultimate Project, never expect to see you here. Naruto narrowed his eyes at Valpier and questioned him, You know about Ultimate Project. The others don't understand what those two are saying, just as they about to ask more, Xenovia and Irina has arrived. It seems we are just in time stated Xenovia then turned to both rogue exorcists, heretic freed and archibishop Valpier Galilei, in the name of God, I will end you lives. Oh two more bitches have appeared. No problem, I will cut you all down in instant with my sword exclaimed free creepily and began to lick the edge of his word. But Valpier refute him though, we must retreat this time we're sent here to deal with spies from church, but to deal with the wielder of holy swords and even ultimate, that is beyond us. I agree, Gigi, but what is that ultimate you are talking about? Before they left he decided to ask that question. That, huh, Valpier turned to look at Naruto with his sky grin, but nearly piss his pants seeing a chilling look in Naruto's eyes, there were absolutely no emotions in those eyes, eyes of unfeeling killing machine, EHM, I will tell you when we escape. Then, Abeo. Freed shouted out with a crazy grin and threw a flash bomb that ninja often used to blind their enemies and escaped, Yudo and two holy sword wielders cursed and immediately chased after them. Suddenly a voice was heard behind them, Issei and Saji looking back and paled, from the two seals of teleportation two heiresses comes out. You two are such naughty kids Ria stated and Akino was there with her, maybe you two should explain about your actions. You two, Saji demands Sona looking scarily at Saji. I don't want for Yudo Senpei to leave us replied Kaneko with her usual soft voice and looked down a bit. Issei recalled there was one more person with them and exclaimed, what about Naruto Yuru? He was in this mess too. At the reminding of Naruto, Rias looked up at the roof of the building where Naruto is currently standing, he stayed motionlessly like that since Valpier spilled out about ultimate, his eyes were shadowed by his front bang and the night breeze is blowing his hair dramatically, just she was about to call out to him. Naruto used Kamui and suck himself in the space-time hole created by his eyes. What's wrong with Naruto? Wondered Rias looking concerned. He was like that after that geezer Valpier spoke about some kind of ultimate project answered Issei. Kaneko also found Naruto's behavior strange, 
She recalled the look that Naruto gave Valpir, even if it was not directly at her just by gazing at them, she could feel shivers down her spine, Naruto was that terrifying to her that moment. Ultimate project, I am hearing it for the first time stated Rias trying to recall if she ever heard something like that. Rias suddenly embraced both Issei and Kaneko, Issei blushed slightly being hugged by his Bushu, he thought that all her attention will now focused on that emotionless Yuru, but it seems he still has a chance. Such naughty kids, making me worry like that. Scene change. After that, to explain more about the situation, they entered the church there. After the explanation, Rias understood what is going on more or less. Sayuto is chasing Freed and Valpir together with those two girls, right? And Naruto's location is unknown, but he probably is heading there as well concluded Rias sitting at the bench with her arms crossed as usual. Now time for punishment. Saji exclaimed Sona and stood up focusing her magic in her palm. Saji pled for forgiveness, but Sona ignored his plea, then began to hit him with magic to his rear. Issei was about to think that something like that won't happen to him, because Bushu is very kind to her servants. Now Issei you also turn around to receive your punishment. Be but Bushu I thought you were kind towards your servants reasoned Issei shakily. Gomen but to punish naughty servants that is the job of every master's after all Rias replied with a smile. Onor, Naruto, you know that this will happen and escape beforehand, right? Issei shouted out with tears of pain running down his eyes as he is being hit by Rias with magic as well. Thanks for watching.